Hey Calculus class, today we're going to learn topic 21, higher order derivatives. This is the last topic in unit 2. Alright, so we're going to start with some notation. So we already know that the first derivative of y equals f of x is given by one of the following notations. y prime, f prime of x, the derivative of f of x with respect to x, or our good old dy dx. <clears throat> now we can find second derivative, so taking the derivative of the derivative, the third derivative, taking the derivative of the derivative of the derivative, and so on. So we have the second derivative, and that is written as either y double prime, f double prime, the, deriv the second derivative of f of x with respect to x, or the second derivative of y with respect to x. We have the third derivative, and that is written as y triple prime, f triple prime, etc. And then we can also find anything after the third derivative, so fourth derivative, fifth derivative, and so on, will be written as y to whatever derivative, or f to whatever derivative, and so on. <clears throat> the only ones that get the tick marks are the first, second, and third derivatives. All right, so we will want to find the fourth derivative of y equals cosine x plus sine x. So I'm going to find the first derivative, so derivative of cosine, negative sine x, derivative of sine is cosine x. Now I have to take the second derivative. So I'm going to take the derivative of the first derivative. So that means the derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. Derivative of cosine, negative sine. For the third derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of the second derivative. To get the sine x is the derivative of negative cosine x. And negative cosine is the derivative of negative sine. Now to get the fourth derivative, I'm going to take the derivative of the third derivative. Get that the fourth derivative is cosine x plus sine x. And notice we're back at our original function. All right, second example. Find the second derivative of h of x equals tangent inverse of x squared. So for the first derivative, I'm going to have to use the chain rule my inner function is x squared, my outer function is tangent inverse. Derivative of x squared is 2x, and if we can remember the derivative of inverse tangent, which is 1 over 1 plus u squared. And go ahead and multiply these together, and replace u with x squared. And I can go ahead and simplify this to get 2x over 1 plus x to the fourth. So now when I find the second derivative, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. So h double prime, the derivative of the top, so the derivative of 2x is 2, times the bottom, minus the top, times the derivative of the bottom, all over the bottom squared. And I can go ahead and simplify this. So I distribute the 2 through and multiply the 2x with 4x cubed. Combine like terms. I could, if I wanted to, factor out a 2 on the top, but it's not necessary. So I'm going to consider this done. All right, so for our third example, we are going to find the second derivative using implicit differentiation. So your first step is to find dy dx by implicit differentiation. So I'm going to take the derivative of the square root of x, which gives me 1 over 2 square root x plus the derivative of the square root of y with respect to x, so 1 over 2 square root y times dy dx, equal to the derivative of 1, which is 0. Now I'm going to go ahead and solve for dy dx. So subtract the x term over, and multiply by 2 square root y. The 2's cancel, and I am left with negative square root y over square root x. So now, this is just my first derivative. I now have to take the derivative of this. 
So step two is to take the second derivative with implicit differentiation. So here's my first derivative. In order to take the derivative of this, I will have to use the quotient rule. So this is going to get messy. All right, I'll explain each piece. Um, the, since this whole thing is negative, I'm going to keep this negative on the outside of my derivative so I don't lose any negatives. <clears throat> so the derivative of the top with respect to x, so the derivative of square root y, 1 over 2 square root y times dy dx times the bottom function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do some simplifying. I am able to put the square root of x on top of two square root y, and same with the square root of y on top of two square root of x, and of course the square and the square root cancel on the bottom. Now, what you're gonna do is replace the dy dx, which is the first derivative, that you found in step one. Because in step one, we found what dy dx was equal to. So I'm gonna go ahead, replace the first derivative with negative square root y over square root x to get the following. <clears throat> and now I can do some simplifying. You should notice that we got some canceling that will help us out to get negative one half minus square root y over two square root x, all over x. Now I'm gonna go ahead and find a common denominator on the top, which is two square root x. So I have to multiply the first term by square root x so that I have negative square root x minus square root y all over two square root x all over x. And I would like to point out here how I have been carrying this negative all along with me the whole time. So don't lose that. I can bring down this denominator to join x. I can go ahead and distribute this negative through onto the top so that I get square root x plus square root y all over 2x square root x. But you're not done. Step four is to try to simplify so that you can identify the original equation in the second derivative. Then you're going to substitute that. So here is what I currently have for my second derivative. You should notice here that this numerator is our original function from the beginning of the problem. So I can replace the square root x plus square root y with one. This is your final derivative. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and look at graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime. All right, so in our first example, we have our f function. So if we wanted to sketch the derivative of this function, we always have to look for our horizontal tangent lines first. You'll notice that we have a horizontal tangent line right here at x equals zero, so that means the derivative graph is going to be at zero, zero. Then to the left of that horizontal tangent line, we have positive uh, tangent line slopes. And they start off fairly steep and get closer to zero. So that means our graph is going to start off fairly high in the positive direction and come down to zero. Then once we hit the horizontal tangent line, they start off flat and they get steeper, but they're still in the positive. So that means our graph of the derivative will stay above the x-axis. So your sketch should look something like this. <clears throat> now, if I wanted to take the derivative graph of the first derivative, so f double prime, I'm going to do the same idea. Find the horizontal tangent line. So in this case, it's going to be at 0, 0 again. Look at the tangent lines. I have negative tangent lines that start off steep, get closer to 0, then they hit the zero, and then they start off flat and then get steeper in the positive direction. So your second derivative graph should look something like this. All right, I want you to see if you can sketch the first and second derivative of this original function on your own first. So go ahead and pause the video. All right, let's see how we did. 
just horizontal tangent lines. You have one here, here, and here. So you know you have three zeros at those x values on the derivative. Here we have negative tangent lines, positive tangent lines, negative tangent lines, positive tangent lines. So your graph of your first derivative should look something similar to this. It doesn't have to look exactly what I have, just as long as it has the right curves in it. Now, now when you find the graph of the second derivative, looking at the first derivative graph, we have a horizontal tangent line here and here. And then we have positive slopes, negative slopes, and positive slopes. So the graph of your second derivative should look something like this. So a couple things to keep in mind when you're sketching the graphs of f, f prime, and f double prime. First thing, these are sketches. They don't have to be perfect, which means you don't have to necessarily know the y value. The x values are the same, but not the y values. Always look for the horizontal tangent lines first. And when the slope of the tangent line is positive, that means that the derivative graph is above the x-axis, and below the x-axis for when the slope of the tangent line is negative. All right, now some physics. So we already have position and velocity. Now we're going to add acceleration. So we know that the position function is where an object is at any given time. And this should look familiar from Algebra 3-4 and math analysis and maybe even physics. So our typical position function is 1 half times the gravity constant, t squared, plus your starting velocity, times t, plus your starting height. When we're going to use t equals seconds and s equals feet. Um, I know in physics you typically use meters. Now the velocity function is the speed and direction of an object at any given time. In other words, it's our first derivative. So if I was to take the derivative of my position function, I would get the gravity constant times time plus v naught, the starting uh, velocity. And the units for this one is feet per second. Now we have our acceleration function. And this describes the increase or decrease in speed or the rate of change of the velocity. So acceleration function is the second derivative of the position function or the derivative of the velocity function. So if I was to take the derivative of the velocity function, I would just get my gravity constant. And these units are going to be in feet per second squared. And on Earth, our acceleration gravity constant is negative 32 feet per second squared, or if you're in science, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And if you're not on Earth, they'll tell you what it is. All right, now we're going to look at a position graph and how we can relate that, that, relate that to the velocity graph. Then we're going to relate that velocity graph to the acceleration graph. All right, <clears throat> so right here, you should notice that you have an increasing slope, which means that the velocity is positive and increasing. So on the graph of our velocity, we have a positive velocity above the x-axis and it's increasing. And I know it's increasing because the tangent lines get steeper. Uh, between these time values, I have a constant slope, but the velocity is positive and constant. It's positive because my tangent lines are positive. So that means on the graph of the velocity, we have a positive velocity that is constant. Here, we have a decreasing slope. Now the velocity is still positive because the slopes are still going in the positive direction on the tangent lines, 
but it's decreasing because the tangent lines are getting flatter. So that means the graph of my velocity, positive values, but decreasing. Then right up here, you should notice we have a horizontal tangent line, which means our velocity is zero. So that means at this time value on my velocity graph, the graph is going to cross the x-axis. And in terms of our object, that means it stopped. So this piece, we have increasing slope, but it's in the negative values of velocity and decreasing. So the reason why I know it's increasing slope is because I have flat tangent lines and they get steeper. And the reason why I say decreasing is because the steeper in the negative direction, the, the smaller the value. Or in, in other words, the larger you get in the negative direction. Now, between these time values, we are getting a flattening curve. And as you can see, the velocity is going to be negative because our tangent lines still have a negative slope. And it's increasing or getting closer to zero because what's happening is that we have our steep tangent lines are now becoming flatter, which means they have to go back towards zero. So that means on my velocity graph, I'm going to have to go back towards the x-axis. Then the last piece, you should notice that we have a horizontal line, which means zero slope. So my velocity is zero for those time values. All right. <clears throat> now, this right here is the velocity graph we just sketched. So now we're going to do the exact same thing, but this time we're going to sketch the acceleration graph off of this velocity graph. So we're going to first look at the, the velocity function between zero and this time value, about four seconds. We have a positive velocity, and I just realized I made a mistake. This is not increasing. <laughs> It is constant, but the acceleration is um, positive. So on my acceleration graph, I have constant acceleration, but it's positive. So make sure you say constant right here, not increasing. Right here, you should notice that we have a corner, which means that our the derivative does not exist. So that means our acceleration does not actually exist here. So we're going to have a hole on our graph. This piece, you should notice that we have horizontal line. So the velocity, and I just realized that this is also incorrect. The velocity is not equal to zero. It is a positive value. And, but the acceleration is equal to zero. So that means the, that part of my graph is going to be like this. And I notice you have another corner here. So that's why I have an open dot. This piece of the velocity graph is that the velocity is, func is positive, and this is still constant, so that should be constant. But you should notice that the acceleration is negative because the tangent line slopes are now negative. So that means my acceleration graph is going to be constant but negative. And at this, this 15, Nothing changes really, except you notice that the velocity is now negative, and this is now constant still, and the acceleration is also negative. So on our graph, it just keeps going, because from here to here, there's no change in the acceleration. <clears throat> Now from our last piece, and notice that this is a corner, so I have a hole, and here we have a negative velocity and constant acceleration, but this time the acceleration is positive because the slopes of the tangent lines are positive. So that means on my graph of my acceleration, I get the following. And then this last piece um, is the, horizontal tangent line and it's constant and zero. All right, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed the multiple uh, derivatives and I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.